One of the questions last class was about, can we do addition? So we define these natural numbers. If they are a good way of representing what we think of as natural numbers, we should be able to do addition on them. We should be able to define something on these objects that we can construct through these strange rules that behaves the way when you were in first grade or probably many of you younger than that, you learned what addition means. We should be able to define it. So let's try. So can we define addition to work on these objects that we're constructing? It's always a good idea to start with a definition with definition. And that seems kind of silly, but it's actually important. All the definition is, is we're making up some notation or some term and we're giving it meaning. We're trying to make up something and give it meaning that matches our intuitive no notion of addition. So we're going to define addition. Let's define it in terms of just two numbers. Our goal is to define what it means to add two numbers. So we're going to introduce a and b as variables. Those are our natural numbers. The English language around addition is kind of complicated. Right? I don't know a word more like add that would be in place of sum. This is what we're defining. That's defining add. Probably using the math notation it makes more sense. We're defining what a plus b means. What's the easy case? Good. So which one is zero? Both of them. Both of them? Okay. So that's maybe the easiest case. If they're both zero, what's the sum? Is there a s almost as easy case that we can use that covers a lot more possibilities? Okay, good. If one of them is zero, the sum is the other one. Which one do we want to make zero? Does it matter? It's going to affect the rest of the definition, but certainly either one would work. We can make either one zero. I'm going to make the first one zero because I think that's a little more natural. If a is zero, a plus b is b. The use of the equal symbol there is kind of dangerous. Right, so we're not defining equality here. Probably I should actually write is instead of equal. So now we need case two. What is the condition for case two? If we only have two cases, the condition for case two better cover every other scenario, which means A is non-zero. If A is non-zero, what do we know about A? Definitely A plus B is not equal to B if A is not zero. Can we break A down into pieces if we know A is non-zero? Metaphorically, it's the successor. With the notation we're using here, that means A is something like this. And for some other natural number, P is some natural number, something represented by this construction, and A must be P union set of P, then A plus B is what? The notation is hard here, and we're using it to be like sets, but if you think about what it really means, this is A is P plus one. The intuitive meaning of how we define the union of the set of the thing. Yeah, so what is that? It's P plus B union with our second Good. An intuitive thing we wanted to say is A plus B is now P plus B plus one. With our funny notation, what that means is it's the plus is what we're trying to define. Right? So this is a recursive definition. We're defining plus in terms of plus. And this is unioned with that P. So is this a good definition? If you were teaching a second grader what addition is, this is not the way you would want to do it. I think that's true. Maybe a third grader, this would be a good way to do it. They're ready for that trauma by third grade, I think. I hope so. I only have a second grader, so I don't know. By these two cases alone, have we defined addition that's going to work on any two natural numbers? where our constructor is the way we're making natural numbers. Yeah, I think we have. And the reason we have it, P is smaller than A. If you think of this like a recursive procedure definition, and you could certainly turn this into code, you are subtracting one each time you use the recursive definition. So you're eventually going to get down to the base case, where A is 0, and you're going to have your answer. So this is not an efficient way if you were implementing a program to do addition efficient way to do it, but it is, it is going to be correct. Yeah? I think you're defining it as adding two 
adding it and you're defining addition, it just doesn't make sense for me that you're allowed to do that. <laughs> that we're using plus in our definition. Yeah. Okay. Is that what's unsaid? Yeah. Okay, good, good question. Yeah, it should make you somewhat uncomfortable. We're doing that all over the place, right? This is the recursive call. We also defined a natural number in terms of a natural number. We defined a set in terms of a set. We define things recursively all the time. When you have a recursive definition, the way to know it's not circular is to know that, yeah, we're not defining A plus B in terms of A plus B. If we were doing that, that's like if we said a good definition is a good definition. We're not making any progress. In this case, what we're doing is we're defining A plus B in terms of the predecessor of A plus B. We still haven't defined plus, but the combination of the two rules is going to be enough to define plus. And you are right to be uncomfortable with that. There is a whole philosophical question of whether this is really valid, which I, I don't want to get into today. Because right? there could be other ways to interpret that. The way we want to interpret this as this is really a definition that means addition the way we are is one way of interpreting that. That's the fixed point of these two definitions, that if we assign plus the meaning we think it has, this all makes sense and seems to behave correctly. Definitely not obvious that that's the only way to interpret this. Yes, question. Why do we use the, the set notation instead of the successor? Yeah. Okay, good question, yes. Did it matter that we changed the notation? Let's say we wanted to find addition with the successor notation. Definitely have to change this. How, how would we have to change this if we use the other notation? Right, instead of A is this, then we would say A is the successor of P. And instead of this, we would say the successor of P plus B, which is maybe a little more readable and satisfying because thinking of the successor is a more natural way to think of adding one than the unioning a set with itself. The meanings are the same. Just a question of, here's the notation that we're using that maps to this abstract concept we have of numbers. So the only reason that I introduced that was to hopefully make that point was to say that, yeah, these, these are symbols. When we talked about defining the natural numbers using the successor function, that was kind of magic because we don't have a successor function. Right? We at least didn't have that defined, and maybe that's an unclear notion, but it's part of the definition just as a symbol. Right? These are just syntactic things at that point. Whereas union is something we have a bit more of an intuition about, and we can get a definition that has exactly the same meaning and produces things that we can map one-to-one -to, -one to the numbers that we were producing with the successor and to our intuitive concept of what a number is. Right, so they are exactly the same in meaning. Uh, until we give anything more meaning than we've given it, they're exactly the same as just changing the way we write it down.